healthy, in this video, we'll look at diffraction, block waves, and extinction distance in different light. The new concept we introduce is called the dispersion surfaces. Let's start by looking at what dispersion means. I took it straight from the Williams and Carter book. When talking about light, the word dispersion means separation of electromagnetic radiation into constituents of different wavelengths. In electron optics, dispersion has a very similar meaning, but it emphasizes on the different k vectors or different energy. From previous videos, we learned that in diffraction it's elastic scattering, so there's no change in energy. Therefore, what we see in dispersion is really from the different k vectors. In the two beam condition, we have the incident k vector, that's ki, as well as the diffraction k vector, that's kd. Since it's elastic scattering, the magnitude of ki is the same as the magnitude of kd. The corresponding diffraction spots are capital O and capital G. From capital O to capital G, that's the G vector. The G vector is the lowercase g. Using the capital O and capital G as the centers, we can draw two spheres or two circles with k as the radius. The circles you see on this slide represents the surfaces of constant energy, and it is called the dispersion surfaces. You can also see the dashed line in this figure. The dashed line is the trace or the projection of the diffracting plane. The diffracting plane in real space is always perpendicular to the g vector. The diffracting plane is also equivalent to the Brillouin zone boundary in solid state physics. In fact, in real life, you wouldn't see these two spheres intersecting with each other. What we have here is based on the assumption that ug, the inner potential of the crystal, is equal to zero. So, what if ug is not equal to zero? When ug is not equal to zero, these two spheres will not intersect. You will have a gap, and these two branches. The gap you see here is analogous to the direct band gap you study in the semiconductor physics. For the electron waves, you have the k1 and k2. You also have the k1 plus g and the k2 plus g. These are the four block waves. Let's have a closer look at this gap. The distance or the energy gap between these two branches is called delta kz. The minimum value for delta kz is at the Brillouin zone boundary, which is equal to 1 over Cc g. Cc is the extinction distance for the specific g value. Let's recall what we have learned in the dynamical approximation. When the excitation error is equal to 0, the effective excitation error will be equal to 1 over Cc g, and this is exactly what is shown here. We do not have to limit ourselves to just two beam condition. In the multiple beam conditions, we just need to draw more dispersion surfaces. In the example shown here, it's a three beam condition. We have the minus g and the g. So there are three dispersion surfaces. We can further extend it into a five beam condition. This figure highlights the branches in the five beam condition with ug not equal to zero. At each node, you can see there are two pairs of block waves. We will come back to this when we discuss the dislocation imaging. In the next video, we are going to introduce a very important concept called the structure factor.